welcome back to the video so my name's Alex if you're clicking into this video and this is my video of top tips for toilet training a toddler a three-year-old specifically if you hadn't watched the introductory video that's where I went through an overview of my experience of toilet training sort of like the highs the lows the anxiety the confusion just the experience in general to give you a sort of fellow mums experiences of the challenges and the triumphs of toilet training this video is just going to cut to the chase of the top tips that I think I can impart for you and um, so I recommend you go back and watch that but if you are not going to do that I will just mention we very very loosely started off the toilet well we loosely started off the toilet training thing based on the oh crap potty training method but as you'll see from these tips we did divert from that so my top tips and I've written these down let's go number one and I've got to read it first and then and then I'll get back to you okay so my first tip is to be, be my first tip be flexible with the toilet training method that you're going to go with and also so don't necessarily fixate on one method be flexible with what is and isn't working for your child be flexible with taking tips from different methods and different people be flexible with evolving the method as you go and for adding in different methods or for changing the method if it's just not working yes you do need to be consistent which is keep on going you know don't throw in the towel because it's hard because it is difficult well it can be difficult but be willing to evolve and know that day one of potty training is very different from day seven of potty training and day 37 of potty training so your method on day one is going to need to evolve over time don't be discouraged if it doesn't fall into place within three days there is a bit of a popular method that says it takes three days i don't think this is realistic for most children so please don't be discouraged if that's not happening for you it's a process it can take time all children are different so you just have to be patient tip number three it is a good idea to clear your calendar for a block of days right at the beginning of potty training and to not crowd your schedule but you do not need to clear your schedule for weeks which is sort of what we thought we might have to do when reading one of the popular guides you don't have to do that in fact we went away for a little holiday a week after starting potty training the block of time at the beginning is really helpful for observing your child for getting an idea of how frequently they need to go to the toilet and for being able to watch them and put them on the potty when they start to go to get the connection for them of we goes in the potty um so yeah it is good to have a few days at the start at least okay so my next tip is about whether they should be naked commando or dressed in undies in my experience and based on stuff that i've read it was really helpful for us to have our child go naked for the first few days because it helped him have the sensation experience the sensation of winging without having the security of the nappy it also helped him see where the wee had to go in the potty um and they say like if you have the um close feeling of a pair of undies or a nappy you know on your body or undies on your body it feels like a nappy so it sort of prompts you it's that muscle memory and prompts them to just go so in my opinion it really did help with the connections for him to um to have that naked and have that commando time okay my next tip is that in my experience it did not hurt to revert back to pull-ups when we needed to so for example if you just started toilet training and then on the weekend you had a social obligation and you knew that it was just going to be so much hard work to toilet train there please just don't be afraid to go back into a pull-up the method some methods say do not do not confuse them do not go back to pull-ups or nappies it'll just cause confusion i really disagree because 
we did go back and forth a little bit as recently as this weekend we chucked on a pull up when we were out to dinner with friends and we just wanted to relax and it hasn't caused him to lapse yes it did take him seven weeks to get here but i don't think it was because we went back and forth to pull ups i think you have to give yourself a bit of grace and it's not going to undo all the work especially if you communicate with your child and just say you know we're just going to wear a pull up today just in case you need to go to the toilet and we can't find one just for today just communicate and it's all good one great tip that i got from a friend and that seemed to work for us is to take your child on little outings out in public while you're toilet training um you know maybe after a number of days because it seems like when they're out they realize that it wouldn't be great to wee in public like if they're they're at a friend's place or at the shops or something and they seem i think that helps them to learn to control it we went out about two or three weeks into maybe two weeks into toilet training plane going overhead hang on um i took jed to a friend's place a couple of weeks into it and i would you know i offered him the toilet while i was there he said no he ended up holding his wee for about three hours and i was amazed when i got home and i think it was because he you know well he had the ability to hold it i don't know i think it just helps them a little bit another tip is to have a play date where a friend who is also toilet training comes over and develop some enthusiasm enthusiasm that way so we had we had a play date and my son's little friend um, was over and I was and I said Jed show show him your potty go and show him where it's set up in case he needs to go and it's like do you have your undies on today Jed's got his undies on have you done a poo today Jed hasn't done one yet but maybe soon like just get them on board with seeing that this is normal for other children as well if they don't have that exposure already a quirky little tip that we picked up if you're having some trouble troubles with a defiant child who doesn't like to be reminded or you're just getting sick of doing the reminding is to use um, an Alexa or Google Home to do the reminders. So when your child does a wee, you look at the time and say your time between reminders is an hour and a half, you just go Alexa, set alarm for an hour and a half and she goes off and your child knows that that's the wee signal um, you might still have to prompt them but it puts the onus on the alexa takes it away from you it's just a helpful little tool to have in your belt make the toilet environment inviting i went too far with this by putting posters up on the wall thinking that he would have stuff to look at while he did a poo well he all he did was pick off the blue tack and the posters were ruined but what i did was put a, um, a stack of books next to the toilet which were accessible from arm reach so not hard to get to so he could look through you know and relax while he was going to the toilet um as phoebe from friends says i like having things to read in the bathroom and my son does too so i keep a stack of books in there give him something to do no one wants to be bored in the toilet and it yeah it helps another tip that i got from um the oh crap potty training lady was to do with the um calling explaining to your child about the poo gate so explaining to them like the feeling of when the poo is there that you need to open the gate and just let the poo slide through so it's about giving them those visuals because they don't know what it means to do a poo or have the poo come out of their body um so yeah just say sit on the toilet and open the poo gate another good way that i learned from her was to get a fistful of um play-doh and put it in your hand and explain to your child that this is the bottom and here's this is what happens when you need to do the poo and Here's the poo and when you go to the toilet it just comes out like this and you squeeze and the poo comes out just to show them how it works. Those are a couple of things we did with Jed. In terms of also prepping him and educating him we also hired books from the library about potty training. I wouldn't really bother buying them because there's, there's the sort of books that you don't really need to read again once they've got it so library is great for that. Um, but I will say reserve them ahead of time because they're popular 
and another thing is you can find some good YouTube videos um, just little things to get them on board and get their buy-in and I'll link a couple of the ones that I liked down below rewards let's talk about rewards we have been sort of following a school of thought which is about not rewarding kids for behavior that they should be self-motivated to do so we and we sort of thought right we'll try not to give rewards for potty training because we want him to be self-motivated day five we were so just sick of potty training and not getting anywhere possibly we were being impatient but I introduced rewards and I'm not sorry that I introduced rewards. We introduced a system. I had a lolly jar. I put it up on the fridge. So it was like, ah, and I put in it Maltesers, a packet of jelly beans and some Smarties so that I could give him a choice. And the system I said was one for a wee, two for a poo. And you know what? It really worked. He immediately started having way more success in being willing to go to the toilet and successfully going to the toilet, it worked for us. And I do not regret, regret one bit giving him lollies for that. And do I think I've ruined him for the future? No, I don't. Will I be giving him rewards and bribery for lots of other things? No, I don't. No, I won't be. But toilet training is just one of those things you just want to get out of the way, to be honest. So rewards. I would try it without it, but if you whatever don't feel bad if you do rewards i'll just say that all right next tip we're getting through this try not to pay attention to if your parents say that toilet training was easy they don't even remember it being hard or anyone who says anything like that because i think they forget the reason i know this is because i took detailed notes on my phone on how i was feeling and how i was finding it for the first week it was very stressful. It was very anxiety inducing. It was very boring. It was very tedious. It was very messy. It was hard. So, but when I read those notes a few days ago, I literally had forgotten about a lot of that experience. So please don't be discouraged if you do hear people say that. Know that time makes memories fade and it's a good thing because it means your memory will fade if you're having a hard time too. Okay, this is an important one. If your child says that, you know, if your child hasn't pooed for a couple of days because you're toilet training, um, don't put a nappy on them. Try not to put a nappy on them just so that they can do a poo. Um, really try to avoid that. There, if your child says to you, uh, my bottom is hurting. That's what Jed said to me. Thank goodness I had watched a video, one of Jamie Galaki's. I am going to link her below. Um, and as I said, we didn't strictly follow her method at all, but I did get some good tips from her. She, her video was about, you know, if they say that to you, it's because they need to go to the toilet and they're unfamiliar with the feeling of the poo being backed up and it's, you know, you know, it's uncomfortable. So when they're saying that, you just need to talk calmly to this, to them and say, it's okay. It's okay to come and sit on the potty. I'm right here and just sit back and sit next to the potty and say, you can come, you can sit next to me. I'll sit here with you and just say, I know this must feel really uncomfortable and weird, but it's just a new feeling. Um, I can't actually remember what else you meant to say. Watch the video though. It was really helpful. Um, I'm going to give you another tip with regards to constipation. Um, and that is coconut milk. I, uh, yeah, coconut milk just lubricates things and helps things slide right out so that if they need to go to the toilet, they like need to go to the toilet. So it doesn't give you diarrhea. It just makes things sort of slippery. Um, so I invented a smoothie. I didn't really invent it. I invented the name. So it's basically a banana smoothie and I put coconut milk in it instead. And it worked like a charm. Every time Jed had gone, you know, longer than a day or so without doing a poo when he's usually very regular, I would give him a smoothie and I wouldn't tell him what it was for, 
but it would work you know it would work to help things along with regards to the constipation thing i didn't want to get into a situation where he was super constipated because i didn't want to add that stress to us or him or pain or anything like that so what we would do we would try to encourage him to sit on the potty if he was standing in his spot where he needed to go we would you know pull the pants down put him on there we would take him to the toilet if we were up to that stage but um if it had been a couple of days and he hadn't gone we would just simply let him go for a bit longer in the morning with his night nappy still on knowing that he would go to the toilet and we would then we would be like oh you know you, you did the poo in your nappy let's change that poo's go in the toilet not make a big deal of here's a nappy do a poo in it like you don't want to put that in their head like you do poos in your nappy but we just coincidentally turned a blind eye let him do the poo get that out of your system you know pre primed the pump with this coke the, the coconut milk thing let him do it take away that stress of the constipation so we can just get back to toilet training without that stress of the discomfort of being constipated because that's just not going to help in my opinion now this next tip is especially going to be important if you have an older child like around the three year mark or probably i don't know from two and a half the ones that have developed the you know the personality where they want want that power for themselves so in toilet training so with children you know they want to have power they want to have power they want to have some autonomy over their life they don't want to be told what to do all the time yet when we toilet train them we are telling them what to do quite a lot because we're saying go to the toilet go to the toilet blah 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 which can be frustrating so one way to sort of negate and help the process is to give them lots of positive power along the way and you know get their buy-in on the process so you know take them shopping to get the potty and the undies um let them choose their undies for the day um if you are doing the rewards put a variety of colors or different things in the jar lean down to the level let them choose it um what else oh you know put several books in the um toilet which book do you want to read today you can choose the book today you know lots of positive power another tip and something that you can start before potty training but it's not too late to do it now if you haven't is to teach your kids how to get dressed um unfortunately like i'm a bit embarrassed to say we haven't really taught jed to get dressed by himself before starting toilet training at three years and one month because we he was in nappies so we were kind of just getting him dressed up on the change mat so we did have to teach him at the same time but now he's a pro at it the way i did it to teach him was what i thought would be the easiest way I, I laid out his undies on the floor in front of him the way he had to put them on and then i laid his shorts out like i'd lay undies here shorts here and i'd just say sit on the ground and put one leg in here one leg in here and you have to show them a lot at first but then they get it and they're fine with it usually the undies are all like rolled up and tangled and you kind of have to you know un like straighten them out a bit but um yeah give them instruction on how to dress themselves and undress themselves as well it's good to practice that before if possible so that if they when they need to go to the toilet they're not delayed by putting their clothes on and off in terms of whether you should use a potty first or a toilet first a lot of people are like don't use the potty because you will have to retrain them from the, for the toilet in my experience it was really good to use a potty at first it's um we had two in the house the reason is because when they have no control at first and they start doing that wee with basically not much warning 
you want to be able to put them up, pick them up and put them on that toilet and catch that wee and have that success. Whereas if your toilet is, you know, a couple of rooms away or several meters, you're probably not going to get to the toilet in time unless you're camped out near the toilet. So, and you know, we went away, we were able to take a, to a potty with us. Um, we were able to just take it where we were. So in my opinion, the potty was a really good way to do the first few days of nakedness. But then we didn't stick with it too long because we didn't want that to be the only place you would go. We swiftly moved to the toilet. We went with the step ladder and the seat that goes over the, over the top of the toilet, but there's different things that you can do. Um, the handles on the side for support, I think are pretty good for them climbing up onto the toilet. But yeah, there's different things. When your child has accidents on the floor, um, don't say that's okay. Be careful of your wording. We would just say, ah, oh, okay, oh, okay, next time we'll try to make it up to the toilet on time. Definitely don't scold them because you don't want to discourage them, but you also don't want to tell them that it's okay. So you sort of want to say, okay, let's clean this up. Wheeze and poos go in the toilet. Or you say, where do wheeze and poos go? In the toilet. And you, you know, clean it up or whatever. Don't make a big song and dance about it, but remind them where it goes. Okay, another tip is definitely to, you do need to prompt your child to go to the toilet. We started off this whole thing just trying to kind of, um, I don't even know, we would like ask him to go to the toilet or something and it didn't work like you need to actually tell them it's toilet time it's toilet time especially at the beginning at the beginning you need to just tell them it's toilet time don't ask them because it's toilet time follow me to the toilet marching marching like make it fun see it's, it's in the toilet I'm gonna beat you to the toilet when we go to the toilet then we can go outside like whatever but like it's toilet time a good thing to say if they say, but I don't need to go. I would say, maybe you need to go, maybe you don't, but let's just find out so you don't go on the floor. Simple. Heap on the praise, be really, really, really excited when they go to the toilet. Um, Yay, you did a wee. Yay, you're doing so well. Oh, you did poo, like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Yay, we're gonna have a party. Like, like really ramp it up and make it exciting for them. It is exciting. It's a big it's a big achievement for them. Okay, my next tip about how often to remind them. Um, when you first do the nakedness at the beginning, you'll get a sense of how frequently they go, and that will be like a good starting off point for how often you should remind them. Like as a rough guide, I have heard some people say like every 15 minutes. To me, that is way too frequent, and that would just really annoy me being having my play interrupted that often. I think for us it was either 45 minutes we started with or it might have been an hour. But my tip is to incrementally increase that time and don't stick for too long on one set time because you are going to start, well, we started ticking off my child by making him go too often. So gradually increase the time by 15 minutes. Don't stick in one block of time for too long. and gradually expand the time and while you do that you'll find that they're able to hold for longer or that they just gradually get the sense of I need to go and that's when they start telling you I need to go to the toilet or just start taking themselves. It is okay to ask other people advice. Don't feel like you can't do that. That is why you're watching this video. Um, but yeah, I have heard um, in Jamie's book not to bad mouth her, but one of the things was like, don't tell people that you're toilet training because you'll get all sorts of advice. Well, that that may be true, but I actually asked advice. I asked advice from my online mother's group. I asked advice from my friends because I wanted different perspectives on what worked and that helped me because I got tips. So I would not, I think someone else was like, have a method and stick to it no i don't think so like for me no i want to figure out what different methods that work for different people so don't be afraid to ask for help is what i would say and my last tip would be you do not need to read a book 
Um, I am the type of mum who likes to educate myself and be informed about stuff like with sleep training I did read a program and I'm so glad I did because I have two very good nappers um, because I got the information behind how to do stuff and that worked super well for me but I would say you know but not everybody needs to do that for sleeping but i would say for potty like by the time we've got a potty training age you sort of like i don't really want to read a whole book about poo you can if you want to but i would say you don't really need to you could just do trial and error anyway that is a lengthy video so i'm gonna end it there um i hope that you got some useful tips from this and Good luck with your potty training and if you're in the thick of it or at the beginning of it, like I know it's really painful and annoying to go out of the lovely comfort zone of having a child in nappies, you know, you feel like you're, you've got the freedom to move around and do whatever you want, you don't have to worry about accidents and then suddenly you feel like you're so restricted again because you have to worry about a child having accidents and it's just this extra thing to worry about. I know exactly how it feels like, but just take it from me. That was how I felt a really short time ago. And now it's like seven weeks after we started. It went quite quickly and I feel quite confident taking my son out and now, and that he will just either hold it or tell me that he needs to go. So stick with it. It won't take super long and don't be discouraged if it takes longer than three days because that is completely normal but thank you very much for watching and um please subscribe if you want to see more content like this and other stuff so thanks anyway and i'll talk to you soon bye let me show you my view from outside it's quite nice. this is what i've been looking at my shed and my merry bowls. okay see ya